What's up, everybody? Today, I'm chopping it up with my guy, Brennan Lunin. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Brennan. Like, this dude does like everything literally so he's a new media specialist at north american entertainment group he's working and producing major comedy tours with mike epps martin lawrence cat williams some more if i'm pronouncing that correct bruce bruce and earthquake he's also the owner of eq productions which is a music production company with credits such as espn bmw MTV and Oxygen Network. He also owns EQ Media Company, which is a company that does marketing, advertising, and design. And he's also a music business consultant, digital marketer, and educator helping producers and artists develop and execute a marketing strategy to help grow their music careers. He comes from a family of parents who are both classical symphony orchestra musicians and music teachers. And he also has a degree in music production and business from Full Sail. Man, what don't you do, Brennan? What's good, man? I'm not a great cook. Uh, <laughs> I, I keep busy, man. I, I, it's one of those things, if I don't keep busy, I'll just, you know, I'll end up doing something silly. So I just, I try to stay focused and try to stay busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spread the love. It. Exactly, exactly. So how did you get started in, in marketing and, and music production, and how did how did it, it all kind of tie together? Like, how how'd you get your foot in the door with that? So the music production came first. Um, back in high school, a buddy of mine, a um, buddy of mine and I just basically sat in his basement, and he had like a little, I wouldn't call it a studio, like a little jam room. He had a, um, a drum set. He had like a, I can't remember what key it was. Like, it was like a, one of the first non-speaker having keyboards I've really ever like messed with. I can't remember what it was, but anywho, mm. you know, he had like a little four track. And so we started out kind of doing, you know, video game music. So we like kind of started remaking Zelda music and Castlevania. And this is like going back in like 97, 96, somewhere around that time. Gotcha. High school age, you know? And so uh, uh, one of our other friends kind of came through and was like, why don't you guys make beats? We we're like, why don't we? And then we kind of just started making beats. And then, you know, because we were both pretty talented, not to toot my own horn, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, so we were pretty talented. Other people started noticing and, and we started getting requests for, you know, these kind of no name labels and people try to sign us to these crazy deals. And we were just like, you know, no thanks. And we kind of kept it moving. Um, mm -hmm. Brian ended up going, he, he ended up, uh, buddy, my Brian, the kid I was telling you about, he basically ended up going and doing his own thing. Um, and he ended up moving away. So I just kept on. I kept making, you know, kept making tracks. And this was kind of going before the huge proliferation of um, home studios. So there wasn't that much equipment out there. People didn't know how to use it. So we were making good bucks back in the day. And I was selling a lot of beats. Yeah. Things were, you know, you, you're, probably, you're the same age. You understand. Yeah. And so um, that ended up leading into me working with, you know, artists. And, of course, artists need marketing. And I was like, huh. And having like 10 plus years of sales experience and management experience, you know, I used to sell cell phones, cars. I mean, you name it, I sold it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I knew how to actually do the, 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 the sales end of it. And I figured, well, you know, if you could do sales, marketing isn't that much far off. So I started dabbling around in marketing. And at the time, I actually was working uh, for one of my roommates, uh, Mark Myrick, who is the creative director at Digital Surgeons, which is a pretty huge, uh, they're like a, they're a digital marketing company working with like mega brands like guest watches and you know and they actually just opened a new um uh kind of like a tech hub in new haven connecticut called the district so it's, it's just it's kind of blooming into its own big thing so i was affiliated with them for a while and i learned a lot from mark and from all the guys there and you know started doing it on my own started doing websites graphics you know flyers yeah, people need stuff you know so i'm like i can't say no Mm -hmm. I ended up getting myself in these situations where I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And I'm like, oh, I don't really know how to do that. All right, figure it out. <laughs> and I'd figure it out, and I would get it done, and they would be happy, and I would get paid. So, Dope, dope. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's dope, and, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the channel, because it's dope to see somebody who, who started in music production uh, with that type of background and then kind of really get heavy and into the marketing side of things because you know you you see it every day man as far as the music industry and, and creatives that's like one of our our biggest uh, problem areas is is properly marketing music 
and things like that. So so what is like what is your day to day look like as far as like the campaigns that you work on? Like, do you have like a routine or is it literally just different every day depending on, you know, what you're marketing or who you're marketing for? Um, when, so my, my day job at North American is kind of pretty hectic and, you know, we do about 180 shows a year. Now this is, wow. yeah, this is in between, um, you know, in between comedy, uh, we also do some, you know, soul, some blues. We also do, um, R and B stuff. Like we've worked with everybody from one twelve and like, you know, all those, I would say nineties to like late uh, middle 2000s you know what I mean so anybody like mm -hmm. we work with Mace Tank um, uh, Layla Hathaway I know you've you've done some work with her right you said you're uh, was it no, Layla no, no it was, not, not Layla I wish <laughs> right she's dope so you know maybe I'll, yeah. we'll see what happens so we, yeah, yeah, we're, we'll we're, <laughs> yeah we're doing something with her um, Life Jennings and I can't remember who else there's so many shows so anyway so what happens basically is I come into work and, you know, I run a bunch of Facebook ad campaigns. I started dabbling in the Google. It, it was just it was a little too much for me at the time, so I kind of ended up backing off of it and just really focusing on the Facebook thing. And, you know, I'll, I'll come in and I'll, you know, it, it all depends on when the show is, obviously. So if the show is really far ahead, you know, we run a certain type of campaign and we want to make sure that we get the word out, We you know, we reach as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, as the, the, the days get closer to the show, we end up you know, switching gears and starting to, like, convert a lot of people into buyers. And, you know, there, there, there's a, a strategy we have worked out, so it kind of works pretty well for us, and we always build on it. So it's, you know, and so whenever I get in the office, I mean, it, it, there's no, it's never the same thing. It's always like, okay, you got to do this today. You got to, you know, finish up some graphics for the, for the venues, for tour. You know, mm -hmm. you got to do video edits for, like, you know, when they do voice drops and things like that. It's, I mean, there's, it's never the same thing. That's why I kind of, that's why I love my job. It's always interesting. Yeah, definitely. That's what's up. So I, I hear you mention, you know, Facebook and Google ads and things like that. Like, what, what is your favorite platform to market on? Um, what, what do you think is, is the best from your perspective? Well, so I personally, and I'm not saying, like, when I say the best, I mean for me. I don't. I don't want to sit here and, and, you know, start arguments in the comment section about you know what works best for who. But for right. me, you know what I mean. For me and for what we do in North American and what I do my personal stuff, I just find that Facebook, you know, converts better right then and there as opposed to like I've I've done with Google. I've done stuff with Google and, and Google kind of it converts really well, but it's so you have to really know exactly what your customers are searching for, you know, what channel. So this, it's a lot more intensive as far as actually the research goes, which right. is great. It's, it's wonderful. But the thing about it is, is that I don't have the time to do all this research and we know who our customer is, yeah. you know, depending on the act, it's, you know, anybody like we, we basically cater African-American audience. So anybody like Mike Epps, the demo is, you know, 25 to 54, mainly African-American, you know what I mean? And so, like, I know who we... And then there's obviously, like, more to it, but, you know, as far as Google goes, you have to figure out what that demo is searching, what they're interested in, and it just ends up being a little much for, for my schedule because I got so many tasks. Right. So I, f I find it that Facebook, and because here's the thing, people spend hours on Facebook. Right, now, true. a lot a lot of people say, well, you know, the audience is getting old and... The younger people aren't really messing with Facebook. Yeah, bullshit. And I only say that, and, and I only say that because yes, they might not be on it actively like they are on Snapchat. Yeah. But for the most part, the kind of audience that Facebook caters to every month, it's hard to say that that audience is just your grandparents and your parents. You know what I mean? It's it's us too. It's us, and it's even because now we're having like teenage kids, so it's them too. But right. it's not. They're just not as active. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can rule Facebook out, man. Not it, just so yeah. many, so many people using it. So you mentioned something which was, you know, knowing your audience, your your target audience, and and who you're marketing to specifically. So what if what if a producer or artist or songwriter, whoever's trying to market um, their music or, or beats or whatever, how do you find like? who that audience is like where do you start like if you don't know what they look like if you don't know how old they are like 
what's the best way to to start figuring that out so you can you know start properly marketing well so the way and maybe i don't know maybe it's just me but i like to do certain things backwards okay. like understanding your audience works better backwards kind of right to left instead of left to right because mm. it, it's a lot of people overthink this and a lot of people kind of over you know the <laughs> the thing about advertising is it makes you feel smart and mm -hmm. then people feel like the more in depth they get the smarter they are kind of so it's more of an ego thing than it is like actual like aid to your marketing That's so it. you know so the people overthink this stuff or they grossly underthink it and they're like oh i'm just going to target people who like drake because i make drake type beats yeah so if you think about like if if you really unroll that rug and you start to kind of understand what exactly is going on there people who target people who like a certain famous artist for the most part are targeting fans they're not targeting even music professionals at all mm -hmm. so if i say i like you know i'm going to target people who like drake if I'm Drake and I'm putting out Drake stuff, then yeah, it's great. Target people who like me. I, you know, it works. But if I'm a producer and I'm looking to sell beats and my beats are, you know, Drake, you know, type beats, mm -hmm. then I might want to do something like I might, you know, use rapping as an interest because the detailed targeting. Now, if, if you want to get into the actual like nitty gritty of it, like I am more of a fan of custom audiences and lookalikes and we could get into it a little bit later, but just to touch... The detail targeting portion of it, when you detail target in Facebook, which is under the ad set level. So there's three different levels as campaign, ad set, and ad. The ad set level is where you get all your targeting, the demographic, age brackets, all that stuff. And so the detail targeting falls into the ad set level where you could actually say, okay, I'm looking for people that have, let's say, wrapping in their interest. So they're interested in rapping. So they're more than likely they're going to be an artist, right? They're more than likely are going to be interested in the actual art of rapping as mm. opposed to like like rappers as opposed to, you know, like certain type of, you know, whatever. So you need to really be specific because the way I was taught, advertising works better on kind of like, you know, if I make an analogy, it's 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 more sniper than shotgun. You know what I mean? Like it's more, you're more targeted into a specific audience and you fire one shot and kill as opposed right. to just spray, you know, buck shots all over the place and hit bystanders and every, because what happens is when you advertise, you spend money for people to see your ad. If wrong people see your ad, well, then you're blowing your money for nothing. You're not right. getting, you're not getting conversions, right? So you want to target people who are actually interested in what you're talking about. And they're also, you know, but then you break it down even further. You put they call it stacking, where you stack a bunch of you know a bunch of interests on top of each other using the exclude or the narrow function. So you basically would say, I'm looking for people who are rapping, and then narrow that audience down by people who like Drake. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because if you're a rapper and you like Drake, well, chances are I'm selling Drake type beats. You're going to be able to connect with that, and that's going to be more of a, a a right target for you to, to deal with as opposed to just blindly. You know, oh, I'm just going to target anything Drake related. You're going to blow your budget. I mean, that's really all it comes down to. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's that's good information. And it, it makes sense. Like, you don't think about it, like, when you're starting out marketing, but then you hear a marketer say it, you're like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Right. So that's what's up, man. So, so when it comes to, like, running ads, how long, you know, because I, I see some people, I mean, even myself personally, I, I mean, I would run an ad for, say, a week, a couple weeks at a time and look at the results. Like, how long should you should you run an ad to really get the information that you need to get to start building, you know, going back to when you mentioned custom audiences and lookalike audience? Like, how long sh do you need to run an ad to get that information? Well, so Facebook has a learning phase, right? Every ad that you run, depending on the um, depending on the objective in your campaign level, they have you know a learning period. So if you're running a conversion ad, which is intended to find people that convert, now it could be buyers, it could be email subscribers, it could be even video viewers, but you want them to do something. That's a conversion, right? You convert them from viewer to actual participant, and so whatever your conversion, or I'm sorry, whatever your objective is has its own learning phase. Like conversions have a 50 purchase if you're doing ticket purchases or whatever. They have a 50 purchase learning phase, meaning that for the algorithm that the Facebook is running to figure out who the ideal customer for you is, it would take about 50 purchases for them to dial in. You know what I mean? So I if you could get those like in three days, 
great. You have the learning phase conquered. If you can't get it in months, eh, well, then it's we're going to have a different conversation at that point. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I usually, I'm a fan of, like, set it and forget it for at least, like, five days. Got you. Because you can't keep messing with it. What, what happens is every time you touch anything. Now, I think the only thing you could really f- touch and not affect anything is like names of the campaigns or the, the ad sets and, what, and, and, and ads, but you can't really go in and say, I want to switch audiences or I want to switch, you know. And I have, you know, I always learn something new. You know, lately I just decided not to bulk everything into one ad set to kind of break everything up so every audience have their own ad set and I could see what's going on. But it's important that you select, you know, you, it, first of all, it's important you have this stuff figured out before you start running ads. Like when you run ads, it's not a great time to start figuring things out. Yeah. You, you know waste I mean? a lot of money that way. Yeah. Great analogy I heard is basically it's like when you go across country, right? The wrong times to figure out where you have to go is when you're already lost. You know what I mean? So you want to get the map out way before you start driving and you want to make sure you put the you know coordinates in the GPS because I don't know if kids know what the map is, but uh, <laughs> you know, we're a little too old for they're these, a little old for maps. Days. Yeah, exactly. they're just GPS. Yeah. Like a so, map. What is that? What is it a map? So they want to basically um you'd want people to to you want to figure this stuff out rather in the beginning, before you get, you know, all into the building of the campaign and you already have your mindset on what you want to do. I talk to a lot of music producers and a lot of artists. And I break, I like purposely break their strategies. I try Mm to, right? Because it makes no sense for me to be like kid gloves with your strategy if it's wrong. I want to break it and show you, look, it's broken because it was easily broken. If I can't break it, then I have nothing but, you know what I mean? Go, go ahead. And then nothing but like praise for you. But usually it's people just kind of, they have emotional attachment to whatever they do. They end up basically like going on this whole like safari of trying to place their ads and end up, you know, realizing that they're not doing the right thing. They're not targeting the right people. And again, while all that's happening, Facebook's charging you. They don't care whether or not you get who you get. No, they will will charge you. And so the wrong time to figure out who, what, when, why and how is when you already click that publish button. You know what I mean? So. Definitely. I, I would say set it like you just to answer your question. I would say set it and give it like four days before you even look at it because nothing is going to happen within four days that you're either going to be super excited about or super proud of. So you might as well just kind of just it's like a fishing rod. You know, you put it in the water and you just let it do its thing. You don't keep touching it. Yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. So um, another super huge platform these days is Instagram. I, I follow you on Instagram. You give a lot of dope tips on there as well. Ditto. Ditto. Yeah, yeah, man. Do you um, do you market on Instagram as well, like as far as like paid ads or more so content? Like what, what's your approach when it comes to Instagram? Well, I mean, so here's the thing. So Facebook owns Instagram. It's well, wide known, you know, well known. It's not like a secret. So... Mm-hmm. You could place Instagram ads at the same exact damn time as you're placing Facebook ads. Right. So you could actually, like, what I used to do before I really got into Facebook, like, really, 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 when I, just, when I first started placing ads, I would just click off Instagram as an ad, you know, choice placement, and then it would just place the same exact copy, same image, same whatever, on both platforms. And then I started kind of realizing, kind of soon thereafter, that you can't do that. Because Facebook and Instagram, even though they're the same, you know, same ownership, two different types of audiences, two different type of interaction methods, and even the, the biggest one is basically Instagram doesn't let you link out unless you use, you know, uh, Linktree or if you do like Linked bios and, you know, all that stuff. So you can't put links on images. It's just going to look like a hard link without any clickable, you know, clickability and it's just, but then again, it's different way of messaging and different way of talking to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't lump everything into the same thing. You could do a campaign and then do one ad set be Facebook and then the other ad set be Instagram. And then you could see which one is performing better. And then you could say, okay, Instagram works. You know, obviously you need to give it more data, but you could say, okay, I like Facebook. It works better than Instagram for me. I've, I've ran all these different tests and, you know, it seems like Facebook performs better or Instagram performs better, but that's what it is. I mean, you know, you want to advertise on as many platforms as you can, but at the same time, overdoing it means that all your platforms will suffer because you won't give it enough time. 
You know, you won't give it enough effort on each platform. So um, Instagram is great for visual, um, you know, visual cues for people to kind of pick up on seeing your either ads or seeing your regular organic posts. And, you know, because it's highly visual, people often don't read the, the captions. It's not really like the primary way of, of you know, messaging. But yeah. the, the captions are obviously important. But at the same time, you know, you get two different, interaction levels as well people on instagram are more i guess convertible you know what i mean as opposed to like facebook facebook is a little more conversational and and people just kind of look and you know they don't necessarily do too too much on facebook unless yeah. you really have a great offer you know that's what's up that's what's up so <clears throat> when it comes to music and marketing music um in your opinion what do you think is like one of the most challenging things amongst you know, musicians, producers, artists? Um, I would say getting out of their own way, you know. Mm -hmm. I think as far as music marketing goes, I think people overdo it when they do it or they underdo it when they just don't bother at all and they just employ. And, you know, I'm starting to get kind of even sick of my, you know, hearing myself talk about it, but the whole, like, spam inboxing, like, Oh, all, yeah. all, all that comment, like, you know, comment spamming, you know, inbox spamming, all that garbage. I don't know, man. I guess it works for somebody because people still doing it. I just can't really call it. I think it's yeah. like know. some 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 people I, I, and I guess some people think it's it's promotion, quote unquote, like oh, I'm, I'm putting myself out. there, I'm doing whatever I got to do. You know, hopefully they'll see it like when. And there has to be some type of line that's drawn between spamming links and promoting yourself. Like, where's that? Where's the line? Like, how do you know if you're spamming? How do you know if you're just reaching out to somebody to share your dope music that, you know, well, so times out of 10 is, right, you know, right. that person know. may not think is dope. <laughs> right. And that, not only that, but here's the thing, right? So... As a marketer, we're salespeople, right? I don't care what you market. I don't care. You're selling something, mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, you're just like, what, a nonprofit? I mean, what, like, you can't really justify using marketing and then not say that you're a salesman because what are you doing then? So here's the line that you cross from being, you know, reaching out to being a spammer. Mm -hmm. First of all, that line is when you said hopefully, that's the line. <laughs> if your marketing is based on hopefully, yeah, like we're all hopeful our marketing works, but my marketing <laughs> isn't based on, well, hopefully like people will see it and like it. My marketing is based on, well, hopefully they don't have 400 other things going on in their life and hopefully they have the time, you know what I mean? But I know who I'm marketing to. And so the algorithm and here's the thing too, Facebook and Instagram are not social media platforms. Let's stop, let's stop calling them that because that's not what mm -hmm. they are. Wow. They're they're data mines. Yeah. They mine data. They call, all this like you know all this information we give them voluntarily goes into a gigantic database where they say okay, you know Clint did this this and this. So now you know Johnny Schmo Schmo wants to sell him a beat and he's using our platform to advertise and you know hopefully like you know well not I'm sorry not hopefully but. But rather, hopefully he's available to see it as opposed to he, hopefully he likes this music or whatever. Because, again, you need to understand that when you're marketing to people, you're A, wasting your time and resource. B, you're probably going to piss the person off and get negative feedback if that person doesn't, A, want to see your content. Like, mm -hmm. why, are you, why are producers showing other producers beats? <laughs> and not necessarily, yeah, and not necessarily to be like, well, I want like I want feedback. Well, if you want feedback, hit me up and say, hey, man, I'm so and so, and don't make it a canned message. You know, I just be a human being and connect and say, hey, I'm so and so. I'm from blah blah blah, and this yeah. is what I do. And you seem to be like, you know, you got to kiss a little ass because if you're asking somebody for a favor who doesn't know you, you right. need to kiss a little ass. I'm not. Don't go, you know, getting on your knees, but. You know, hey, listen, I like what you do, blah, 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 and I was wondering if you could review some of my tracks and give me your professional opinion. Bro, 94 out of 10 times I will tell them yes. Like, I, because I respect that. Like, if you're going to exactly. take the time and say, hey, man, how you doing? What's happening? 
like, let me connect with you on a human level, and then I'm going to ask you for a favor when we've built some type of rapport. Now, flip side to that is people who just copy-paste an entire, and you know it's copy-paste because, like, dude, you're not putting all those emojis, and you're not putting all those <laughs> links in every time. Like, we, no. I, I get it. And so when you're doing that, what you're basically saying is like, I'm not going to give you the decency of like talking to you and treating you like a human being. I'm just going to expect you to do whatever I ask you to do, like my music, follow me, whatever. But, Mm. but then if I don't like trap music or not to say I don't, but like, if I don't like trap or I don't like this, or I'm not even the singer or rapper, why the hell are you wasting your time on me? Like, why are you just because I'm in the music business, I'm already gonna just be ready to just listen to your music and exactly just on standby waiting. Yeah, for like the I'm gonna stop. To, to wait, come in. let me stop what I'm doing and listen to your music. Like that's just that's what they're asking people to do. It's the same yeah. thing as in New York City. When you're in New York, wherever big city, L.A., New York, Miami, somebody walks up to you on the street with dirty ass headphones that've been on like 400 people's ears. Terrible. Talking about listen to my mi- mixtape and and then buy it from me. And it's like, dude, I don't even like. I don't. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to listen to it. I just don't. <laughs> right. I don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna walk away. So that's, that's not the what line. I'm here for. The line is basically when you, you know, when you don't know exactly who you're gonna reach out to. That's the line. When you got to hope, you know, like when you got to live on a prayer, then that's mm-hmm. the line. You want to make sure you know what you're doing before you start, you know, making people angry. I mean, if that's yeah. your goal, then that's fine. It must be working for you then. But I don't think that's the goal. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, especially, I mean, with you being a professional marketer, like you don't want to approach Mike Epps and be like, hey, I just ran these ads. I hope somebody watches them and, and likes right. them or, you know what I mean? Like no, you, you, got, you have to be specific. You have to be strategic and purposeful in, in everything. And um, I think the approach, man, the approach matters too. Like, I mean, I get I get links now where there's no introduction. It's just the link, like, and I'm supposed to know what this link is and what to do like, with it. What like, do you want me to do? And that's what I always ask. I'm like, dude, what do you want me to do? And I get I get called an asshole, and I get called all these things. Oh, why you why you gotta be like that? I just you know I'm just trying to promote my music. It's like, bro, like, look, I could just completely ignore you, or I could teach you something that you know. And maybe I'm high, I'm like high and mighty on my own, like you know, high horse, but. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, they did this to me. That's how I learned. I was basically, you know, taught by people that didn't care about my feelings and emotions exactly. and, and just wanted me to learn. And I'm thankful for it because if I don't if I don't stop you from doing what you're doing you'll or you take doing. yeah, you'll keep doing it, but then but then if like I tell you something and you take it as like an insult, like, "Oh, I know what I'm doing." Eh, eh. No, you don't. But then again, right. it's like I'm not going to fight with you again, you know, about what you're doing. So if you don't want my opinion, that's fine. I don't care. But it's yeah. just You know, don't get mad when somebody who knows what they're talking about gives you an opinion. Be thankful or don't. I mean, you know, this is it it, it all goes to your character. But yeah, again, yeah, I mean, I just don't know what to do when you send me a link. I don't really know who it's from or what it's about. I don't know what to do with it. I know what to do now. I just hit delete, man. Right. Well, yeah, (laughs) right. Right. I waste time. But I mean, I find that. If you're if you're the type of producer, type of artist or whatever who who's open to constructive criticism, who's open to to learning something new and admitting, okay, I I probably did this wrong. Like, you know, I appreciate the advice, I appreciate the feedback. You're going to go a lot further in your career than being that person who's just stubborn. You can't you're you're just unteachable. Um, yeah, you're you're just gonna remain stagnant, and you'll probably be spamming links for the rest of your career until you decide to give up. This is like a, and the funny thing is, is this is a tech industry. I don't care how you spin music; it's a tech-based industry. We work with mm-hmm. technology, you yeah. know. We we deal with tech every day in our studios, even on social media. You're still dealing with technology because you want to understand how social works. And you want to understand like when things happen and how they happen and why they happen because if you don't, like I see a lot of people. And here's the thing too, you know, I see a lot of people using social completely wrong, and it's wrong not because you know they're not posting the right, you know, material or whatever. They could be posting the right, the right material, right content, but mm-hmm. they're just doing it completely wrong. Meaning that like they're treating their personal profiles, not your business profile, but personal as a business page and they do all their marketing off of that well you know what facebook is doing now they're banning people for that really yeah 
And the reason for it is Facebook has an ad platform. They want you to put all your marketing crap on the ad platform because yeah. the ad platform knows when to show what to who. So it's not, it's all about user experience, all of it. In every industry, it's all about the user experience. Now, granted, if you, you know, deliver freaking dirt to construction sites, but even then, you want to make sure that you deliver it to the right place and you have, you know what I mean? So everything that you have in your business that is, you know, relying on a customer to do something is, you know, driven by customer satisfaction. So if you don't deliver your messaging to your customer at the right time, when they're most likely to read it, when they're most likely to click on your link, load your landing page, read your content on the landing page, sign up for your email list, blah, blah, blah. If you don't give them the right content at the right time, mm -hmm. it's just spam. It's wow. nothing but spam because I don't go on Facebook to, to see your mixtape promotion that is not what i'm there for right it's interruptive it's disruptive it makes me uncomfortable it makes me unhappy you know what i mean but if yeah. i if if i just went and listened to i don't know like whoever's mixtape and then somebody that's like them places an ad and i see that ad well chances are i'm not going to be that upset but if some random rapper i never deal with but he's added me on facebook to just have me see his post drops a bunch of spam on the timeline and I'm scrolling through and it's like, yo, listen to my mixtape, but it's just, it's disruptive. It's unnecessary. So people need to start learning how to use the ad platform before they lose their whole privilege of, of even being on the social platforms like that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would suck. Definitely. So, um, I guess kind of going in a different direction, we, we've been speaking a lot about, you know, ads and paid ads on Facebook and Instagram. So what if, uh, a producers is not at that place to, I guess, consistently invest money into paid ads. Like, what other ways or other forms of marketing or advertising can they do to to start building momentum and and kind of getting their name out there? Well, first of all, people don't realize, like you're saying, if they don't have the money to to use ads, mm -hmm. like I know some people don't have the the budgets, but like you as a producer could run five ten dollar a day advertising or whatever like five dollar a day mm -hmm. it might not be as effective but you're still gonna reach thousands of people more than you would click baiting or, 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 or you know hitting people with spam links and all that stuff because it's just this is the way that the algorithm works you have an automated thing that shows your ad to the right people as opposed to you going click hey what up you know copy paste mm -hmm. and then get yelled at and you know, move on to the next person. Just it, so it doesn't cost that much to advertise because a lot of people that I know spend that much money on weed, booze, cigarettes, mm -hmm. and other BS. So if you're not going to be willing to, to sacrifice, then I would say the next best thing would be to probably do a lot of events. You know, which again costs money, but I mean that's you. Can, this is a this is a business with a barrier to entry. If yeah. you can't get over the barrier, you're not going to get into the business. I, I hate to put it that way, but, you know, you have to spend money to make money in this business. Otherwise, you won't even be let in. But yeah. going to a lot of events is cool. Doing live shows is cool. Doing a lot of um, uh, doing collaborations with other producers is super important because they have an audience. You have an audience. You're offering their audience, you know, something, and you're letting them offer your audience something. It's it's a nice little, like, cross-promotion thing that you could do. Um, I would also, you know, I would hit up bloggers, even though now it's a little more difficult as far as blogging goes because, you know. But the, here's the thing, too. A lot of people want to go to the biggest blogs, Two Dope Boys, you know. They, they want to go and, and get their music on the front page of that. Like, dude, good luck. <laughs> exactly. You know what you I'm saying? Like, start, you start, start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, million bloggers out there. Million <clears throat> blogs that would love to feature your music, especially if you have... You know, dope cover art if your music's mixed and has appeal to their audience. And you can't go to, like, a rock blog if you're a rapper. And you can't go to a classical music blog. You know, you got to find the right blogs. But once you do, then you'll be able to utilize that to, you know. And, and you got to do them favors. And you got to, you know, it's it's a kind of a quid pro quo industry. Yeah. Nobody's going to give you anything for free. So be prepared for that. But offer some kind of thing in return. Mm -hmm. People will love you for it. Yeah, you we know. definitely got to give value, man. Like I think a lot of people miss that that concept. Even when reaching out to people is, you know, just to take, take, take. But like, it's like, yo, you gotta you gotta have the the mindset of like, what can I do to help you? Like, what can I do for you? 
um, you know, to to just add value to whatever you're trying to do. If you bring, yeah, if you bring value to anybody that you're asking a favor from, like I was actually taught one of my, um, one of my mentors slash bosses, and I was like blessed to work for a bunch of millionaires and kind of mm -hmm. be like, you know, not have a whole lot of like bureaucracy in between the, the top boss and then, you know, the level I was at. So there was a lot of like co-mingling with the owner who had, you know, a ton of money, made a, a fortune and, you know, worked his ass off. And so I yeah. learned a lot and... You know, a lot of it was basically like, never ask anybody for a favor that requires them to do everything. You know, meaning that like, if you're going to be the one benefiting, mm -hmm. you might as well not even ask, you know, or at least like promise and be sincere about returning that favor. But if you're asking people to help you because you're desperate, that is like not the right time to start asking people for help. That's your <laughs> way, pa you're way past the time you should have started. Yeah, you know, because it people, seems like yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go, yeah. No, I was, I was gonna just, say it's it's like a charity thing that you know, not that people don't want to be charitable, but like you know, if you come to me and you say, "Yo, man, like I'm about to get evicted and da 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 and this and that, I need you know fifteen hundred dollars," and and you're like, "Dude, like for the past month, I saw you do nothing but like ch chill playing video games or whatever, exactly. smoking weed, like." Not the right time. But if you came to me and you're like, "Bro, listen, I got all this da da da," da all I'm missing is like. You know, and by doing this, I'll be able to blah, blah, blah. And then I could return it to you or I could do you a favor in return. It's a business. Like we, we it, anytime you ask somebody for a favor, it's got to be treated as a business. And if, if you ask somebody for any favors and they feel like they're just giving, 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 well, how do you think that's going to play out? You know what I mean? Exactly. So the value has to be there for them too. Yeah. It, I mean, it just seems like people, people like to help people who, are trying to help themselves, man. Like, always, like you always. said, dude, like nobody's going to reach out and extend their hand and your work ethic sucks. Like you're not doing anything to, <laughs> to, to you, get to the then, next level. And, and then it's my problem that you're getting like evicted or whatever your exactly. issue may be. Now I got to yeah. feel bad. So now you're making me feel guilty on top of it. And that's the <laughs> wrong time to ask for favors when you just made somebody feel guilty. They yeah. may help you, but that's going to be the last time they help you. And that's not... Yeah, and it puts a, I post, puts a sour taste in their mouth. Like, I posted, yeah, I posted something the other day. I really like. It, it wasn't my, you know, I I stole it from somebody. I don't want to claim like I invented it, but mm -hmm. I, I heard a I heard a um, a saying. It basically said, "Don't burn bridges unless you could walk on water." Wow, you know what I'm saying? And it was yeah. just like, ah, I see, like, <laughs> and it was it was just mainly like, and not necessarily burn bridges, like you know, screw people over, but like. You know, you have a bridge, which is a connection with people, and if you burn it by, you know, showing somebody how irresponsible you are and how, like, unprepared you are for the real world, people are going to be like, bro, you're too much. Like, I can't, like, I'm an adult, and I have kids and family, and I can't, like, give you anything, you know, in the, the matter of what you're asking for. Right. Just on, like, unless I'm built for that, but, I mean, most people aren't. And so if you're asking somebody for a big favor because you were unprepared, that's probably going to be a problem. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be. So it's just better to be always prepared and always planned for the future. Yeah. And it's like the grasshopper and the ant, you know what I mean? Like you want to make sure you're not just playing the whole summer. You're just preparing for the wintertime, you know what I mean? So There you go, man. Ants are some diligent workers. I know that. You're an ant. You're an ant. <laughs> hey man, hey, literally, Anthony. literally. I'm, that's exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm an Anthony man. So exactly, yeah. <laughs> literally. So that's so, that's so that's kind of what I was getting at. Is basically like you know, don't like always be working, always be marketing, and always you know, always stay consistent and don't fall back and just pretend like everything's going to be all right. Maybe it's the pessimist in me saying it, but like the optimist in me knows that you know everything will be all right when you work for it and and exactly. did everything you could. You know, that's it, man. That's it, man. That's legit. So, so like, what mistakes do you see? And we we probably mentioned a few of them already, but like, what mistakes do you see a lot of producers and artists making? You know, when it comes to marketing, whether it's through paid ads, whether it's um, through you know the content they post. Like, what do you? What are like the top two to three that you see? Not knowing, was. not knowing your audience. So, for example, there was an, um, you know, one of the producer homies of mine on Facebook that I kind of deal with, and you know, good kid, never asked for anything, never, you know, always grinding. I shouldn't see his ads for beat sales. 
because I'm a producer. Wrong mm -hmm. audience. You didn't target correctly. You know what I mean? That's and it's costing him. Every time I see his his ad impression, the impression is when your ad gets placed on the timeline. And every time they place it on my timeline, he pays. So why is he paying for me to see his ads when I'm never going to buy a beat from him? Right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is is they do it for like 3 days and then they stop and say Facebook sucks and doesn't work because they haven't they haven't reached any conclusion, they haven't gotten the goals that they were going for, and so automatically it sucks and it doesn't work and it's a rip off. And I see people talking about it all the time and I want to jump in and like be like what are you kidding me? Like you know, show them like my my profit statement from Facebook what we've made, you know. And I don't care if it's my personal business or you know, my company that I work with, North American, I mean, mm -hmm. we spent last, well, last season, I spent somewhere around like $77,000 on advertising and wow. brought back. Now, now, I'm not saying this is profit, and I'm not saying this is right. like, I just say as far as putting in and taking out, and then what my boss does with it is his business, but I put in 70000 we got back 470 Wow. So, granted, it's a famous, you know, person being promoted. It's a concert ticket. It's not the same as selling beats, mm -hmm. but it works. Facebook works, and so yeah. you have you have to a know your audience. B you have to give it some time to do what it needs to do. And you know, a lot of people just keep touching their ads and keep tweaking it, and it keeps resetting that learning phase, so it never works for them. And then the last thing I would say is they put no effort into like the offer. Mm. And they think, they think, um, they think of themselves first. So whenever I place ads, I always think about my customer first. I always think of like solving their problems, fixing, you know, whatever they're going through that they may need help with, as yeah. opposed to like how do I sell whatever, you know? Because when you do that, you start to actually just focus on what works for you, and you completely disregard what works for everybody else that you're trying to market to. And then what happens is, is when you do that, people don't necessarily identify with your messaging. So if you say like, you're like, hey man, I, you know, I'm, I'm selling this beat, but you're not pointing it at the right audience. Everybody seeing that post is gonna just walk right by it and scroll by it and just, you know. So if you target correctly and you say, hey, you know, hey MCs, like I'll always in the beginning of my post when I do advertising, when I write the actual like copy for the the post above the ad. Mm -hmm. I always I always call out my audience. So I'll always say like, hey, you know, Houston comedy fans or hey, stand up fans or hey, Mike Epps fans. You know, so when you see that scrolling by and you're a Mike Epps fan, you're going to read that because it's calling you. It's like right. when you're in public and somebody goes, yo, aunt, you're going to yeah. turn around. They might have not called you. They might have, yo, aunt, whatever, the Schmeagle down there. But, you know, you still turn around because you're like, oh, OK, it's not me. All right. Keep it moving. But they caught yeah. your attention. You know what exactly. I mean? So people don't do that very often that I see, and it's that's what hurts a lot of advertising. And just in general marketing, people make mistakes of just not thinking far enough ahead. There's no yeah. sequence. There's no process. You know, so it's you gotta have a process. Yeah, super super important. Yeah, yeah. I was uh I was on a I was on a webinar the other day, and we were we were just talking about like the importance of processes and. And like every everything you do, like a process, See, you know, and yeah. music production, like I man, I'm telling you, dude, like it just makes everything go so much smoother. You can work more efficiently, and it's just everybody knows what's supposed to be done, when it's supposed to be done, and um, yeah, dude, processes are dope. Well, it's just like I was saying before with the whole, you know, with the whole GPS map thing, like. If you don't, and even forget all that, look at like any grocery store that you go into, right? Mm -hmm. Here's another great example of marketing genius. And it doesn't, you don't have to learn marketing from guys like me because I, you know, I, I do stuff in the music marketing. If you're trying to market, don't learn from people in your industry, go learn from people in other industries and bring that over. So you don't copy somebody else's marketing plan that like works in the same industry as you. Yeah, you know, but look at grocery stores. When you go into a grocery store, what happens? You don't get to just roam around aimlessly. They don't have things all over the place. They have a specific process, and they've done. I can't even tell you how much research has gone into actually, like, you know, placing and staging, you know, stores in general. So if you go into a grocery store, you always start at the produce because that's where usually people come in for. And then you shuffle people through aisle into aisle into aisle into aisle. And they got those end caps that have the impulse buys and everything. So 
that's how I look at my marketing. I look at it like, what is the process? What happens when somebody like sees my initial post? I call it bait. You know, what, what happens when people see my bait? What happens after that? What happens like when they see the bait and take it? Where do I take them next? Because people like processes. They love them and they mm -hmm. respond to them. So if you have a great process, you're going to succeed because it's one of those things where it's like, you know, if you, pro if you laid everything out and you ran the process and you could see that the process works, you present that to people, they're going to be amused. Like, oh man, he really went out of his way. Like he really you know, laid it out so it's digestible and it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's really, it's, you know, it works for what I need and it works for, you know, for me, as opposed to like people who just give you like an end offer, which is like, yo, buy my product. And you're like, yo, I don't know you. I've never met you. You haven't yeah. shown me what you're about. I don't trust you. <clears throat> it's just, it's just because you're online doesn't mean that it's not still like real world. You know what I mean? That's a mistake people make. They treat yeah. online as some kind of like other world that it's not yeah so that's interesting like as far as just like slowly reeling people in so like when you're running ads is it safe to say like it's not always wise to just you know the the one ad you create to just go for the hard sell like is it more of a let's well, let's introduce myself let's get them comfortable so we can start to build this relationship and then at some point eventually sell like is that is that yeah. your approach well it's kind of like this like Anybody that gets to know you, right? Anybody that that you know you encounter for the first time doesn't trust you, right? Mm -hmm. Because of so much scams and so much BS in, in in the marketing world or otherwise, there's so much stuff that goes on that's negative that people have a connotation to either ignore completely, like your marketing plans and your your strategy, right. or they take it with skepticism. And the problem there is you have to sell them. And so what I learned in selling cars is you never sell your product. You sell yourself and then you sell the company. And once that happens, people buy from people they like, not from mm -hmm. people like, like when you go buy a car, you don't buy a car because it's a car. You buy because the salesman did his job. Yeah. You could go anywhere and buy that same car. You could go to four different you know dealerships in your immediate area probably and find that same exact car or one like it. So you don't have to buy it wherever you're at. But if right. the salesperson does his thing and makes you feel <clears throat> informed, comfortable, happy, blah, 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 then you'll buy because you like the salesman. And I used yeah. to sell cars, you know, when I was on and on point and I was feeling it, you couldn't stop me. When I wasn't feeling it and I wasn't being like, I couldn't sell, you know, water to a thirsty person. So, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I, it, it's so it really comes down to like you as a salesperson and what you're capable of achieving in, in your sales presentation you know what I mean so it's it's one thing to say you know you should never do a hard sell it's not necessarily true because you could only have one opportunity to sell you know mm -hmm. so you may have to go for the hard sell but usually on Facebook hard sales don't work I wouldn't even waste time I would just and when I say bait you want to give something of, of real value it doesn't have to cost something to you like it could be like a you know, a, a, a PDF that you created with a guide or, or you know, some kind of a case study that shows, you know, a, a customer that's having the same problem that mm -hmm. you could solve that problem and you have solved that problem <clears throat> and, and you've gotten, te and then testimonials and stuff like that also help, you know, social right. proof, people doing videos saying, hey man, I've worked with, with Clint, you know, he was dope, the music was on fire, like everything was, you know, and then somebody that's going to see that be like, oh, you know what, like he's already had a positive experience with someone, I'm going to give him a shot. Yeah. That's dope, man. Like legit, like these are like life lessons too, because um, in gyms, because it's the same way in in networking. Like people don't like to work with people like they don't know or don't like. So it's just like you kind of have to build relationships with people in a genuine way to where they like you as a person first and then it's just like okay yeah i would like to work with you like not just come up to somebody randomly like hey i'm tim i make beats let's let's work bro like and it's, yeah and then a platinum <laughs> record comes out of that yeah <laughs> yeah look exactly. if it was that if it was that easy it wouldn't be worth anything exactly Yep. And I tr I treat money as a filter and that's another thing i learned you know my days of you know research and and, and marketing studies People get mad when you tell them a price. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, they, they do. Get, oh, or, or people that are, are the ones <clears throat> offering the price get scared because they don't want to run the client off. Mm -hmm. And I, I always found that weird because if you tell somebody a price and they say no to you, 
then whatever. Just keep it moving. Go find another customer. Yep. But but people treat it like, well, if I don't like close this deal, I'm gonna something bad's gonna happen. But then they close a shitty deal, and it has no benefit to them. And then they're like, oh, I closed the deal. No, you didn't. You just agreed to work for nothing. Like you agreed right. to work for for much lower rate than you normally go for. So like it doesn't necessarily like it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to close every deal. But it does mean that you know. You have to use money as a filter because you as a service provider, you know, you may you may approach a customer that is not willing to pay you ever. Yeah. And what is the point of having him as a customer? It's a waste of time, man. Unless he offers something in return. Like if it's like Jay-Z or somebody and he's like, well, I'm not going to pay you, but I'm going to just put you on my, you know, I'll put you on the team or whatever. Then it's like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, but if it's yeah. like Joe Schmo, then it's like. Dude, I'm not gonna make your career and get nothing out of it. That's just this is not how it works, you <laughs> exactly. know. So, and you yeah. filter out the jokers and the people that don't want to pay when you hit them with the with the number, and they're like, oh, oh, oh. then the conversation's over. Great, walk away as fast as you can. These people were never gonna pay you. Exactly. Walk away. There's people Man. that, and it's always like the people who don't pay you, who you end up working with, that end up being your worst customers exactly. of all time. <laughs> And the Listen, people that man. the people that pay you like leave you alone, let you work. Yep, that, I I've I seen it personally, dude. Like when I from when I first started producing, and then I went I went through a phase where like one of my mentors told me he's like, bro, you need to like increase your prices like dramatically, and um and I did, and like the level of clientele that you get from doing that is just. It's like why didn't I do this sooner, man? Like, a hey, hey, Ferrari, f Ferrari doesn't sell their cars for twenty thousand dollars. That's Ford prices. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And people that buy Fords don't go into a Ferrari dealership. Yeah, they don't waste the salesman's time because you know you have to run a credit check to drive a Ferrari. Like, you, <laughs> yeah. you can't just ask for a test drive. They won't <laughs> give you one, and they'll walk you out of the dealership. <laughs> I've had people like tell me, "Oh, I just went to test drive a Ferrari." Did you? No. Well, I didn't think so. Like they're not, <laughs> not giving you a hundred fifty thousand dollar car to just drive around. So that keeps those people out of your dealership. But if you're a, you know, if you sell Beats for twenty dollars, if you do leases, what kind of clientele do you think is going to approach you? It's mm -hmm. not going to be professionals. Yeah. They don't care about money. Money has never been. Something that stopped me from closing a deal. I get more money, and it's easier for me to close the client with more money than it is to close a client with less money. Why right. is that? Man, yeah. dude, it's just, yep. It, it seems does. like, it's it seems like to me that a lot of people just it, it's again it's laziness and it's like that fear of failure. And I'm you know I'm a, I'm definitely afraid of failure, but I'm I'm not afraid to actually go through it. Like, I don't yeah. want it. I don't want it. I don't want anything to do with it, but I go through it frequently, and I'm okay with it because it teaches me stuff. But people don't want to learn that. They don't want to learn that lesson that if you don't put work and effort into something, even if it's learning how to close customers, it's never going to amount to you being successful because nobody – there's no easy baskets in this field anymore. You know what I mean? Like, people aren't just – like, when I used to sell beats back in, like, 96, 97, 98, mm -hmm. you know – People were paying me 250 a beat, like easy. And I like I made it on the motif without even mixing the shit. It was just like <laughs> it was a quick little like mix on the on the faders on the motif eight or seven. And then I dumped it into new endo and then single track dump. And then like did yeah. there you go. That was your beat. You know what I mean? <laughs> and people paid me two hundred fifty dollars for that, you know? Yeah. And then everybody started making beats and it kind of that shit the bed, but the more money, more money, like my, my clients now, my web design, the more money I charge now, the, like the level of clientele is like through the roof, man, you know, so that's what's up, man. Well, look, man, I don't want to hold you too much longer. Nah, I know nah, you're it's all a good. busy guy, man, but, um, let people know how they can get in touch with you to, you know, whether it's to book a consultation, to, to dig some of the information that you're putting out for free on a a consistent oh, yeah, yeah. basis, man. Just just let the people know how they can get in touch with you. So I'm on, I usually don't really do anything outside of Instagram, Twitter, and I'm not even on Twitter that hard, but I'm usually on, on Instagram and Facebook at EQ Productions. That's spelled E-C-U-E and the word productions with S on the end. Um, so you can find me on, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. You could also check out my website, which is www.com. 
EQ Productions. Again, it's E-C-U-E Productions. Um, dot com. You could just jump on there, and I put a lot of articles on there. I put guides up there, you know, Facebook help, things like that. And I also offer um, I offer consultations, which usually, you know, kind of they deal with Facebook mostly because people want to learn how to advertise on Facebook. So what I do is um, I'll, you know, you'll download like uh, an app called Team Viewer, which allows me to remote desktop into your computer. So mm -hmm. I'll basically take over your screen with your permission, of course, right. and and I go into Facebook advertise or the the Facebook ad manager, and I create a campaign right in front of you, so you could see, you know, and we talk on either Skype or whatever, and mm -hmm. I create a campaign right in front of you to kind of show you how it all comes together, where what is, and how it all kind of works. So you're able to see it, and then you could keep that campaign, and then you could duplicate it, and you could do whatever you want with it and run it however. Gotcha. And so you could go right to my website, and there's a, a button that you could just click, and you could schedule that right then and there. Um, and that's that's pretty much it, man. I don't sell drum kits. I'm not. I don't sell beats. I'm not that type of, you know. I'm not that type of producer. I do a lot of, you know. I do a lot of uh, placement stuff. Um, Dope. But, Otherwise, it's just I don't really waste time on, on $20 beats. So. But, hey, man, listen, yeah. I really, really, I, I know I'm returning you the favor that you've done me and been on my podcast. I super appreciate it, man. You know, you're you're dope. Like, I fuck with you heavy. Like, your your music and everything you do is super dope. So I, I'm definitely going to put this up on my profile and share this with my audience as well so they could come check you out as well. Dope, man. I appreciate you. Thanks Lovely, for bro. coming through. And, um, yeah, man, we'll be in touch, man, definitely. All right, my brother. Thanks so much. Appreciate All you right. having me. Peace. No problem, man. Take it easy.